Hi, everyone. Hey, I had the chance March 24th to get the sun. And I'm also very happy I did because on the 25th of March, guess what? During our stream, while we were talking about the dangers of the sun and the hype that I said was coming the sun, well, a CME. Yep, March 25th. And it's um, Earth directed. It's on its way to Earth. An M1.4 solar flare. Now, you see, you know why it's interesting and why it's important to take note of what's going on with the sun? Because it's not being spoken about frequently in the news, nor are the scientists bragging about it, but there's a lot of dangers that they're talking about without, you know, freaking people out. Um, these are the solar flares on March 24th that are um, about to erupt on the 25th, which so this would be Thursday, 24th, and on Friday the 25th, during our stream, uh, I was outside and I got some footage, of course, before the stream, even before one o'clock in the afternoon, and I got some between the two streams. So just for another minute or two, we're going to take another quick look at, uh, you see the clouds there, eh, Peter? <laughs> well, Peter, um, in your footage, you were talking about seeing the solar ring around the flares. You're going to see it too here. And on the 25th, it's just absolutely incredible. There is still the 24th, but whoops, starting already to get agitated. So you can already tell there's going to be a CME. And that's why during the stream of the 25th, I said, guys, we're going to get hit again. And you know what? It's, it's no um, pr uh, prediction. It's the sun that's telling me. You can see it lifting up off of the sun, even um, with this white light uh, way of viewing um, the sun because that's what Peter and I are doing but soon the hydrogen alpha paper we got to look into that man so we can see the chromosphere so this is directly during the CME the same day either hours before or hours after and I'm saying that because I did not look but now we're the 25th there no more 24th we've changed so we're going to remain for the rest of the video on the 25th which is um the day of the cme which is we're the 26th now so yesterday and this is pretty serious so when is it going to hit it always takes either 48 to 72 hours to hit earth there you can see that ring around the collar of the sunspot we're going to see it with the filtering which shows us the fires on the surface look at the spotting uh, around meaning the white that's lifting up that's plasma it's literally lifting up off the surface and the field lines obviously crossed paths and that's what causes massive solar flares what are the dangers of solar flares um, or should I say coronal mass ejections and what are the the dangers of earth being hit by several geomagnetic storms because now it's starting to get scary we're starting to have one uh, as a pattern like once every week and a half wow this is really like front row seats to the sun to get a really amazing view we're even looking at fires you know what it looks like guys it looks like a fire pit like a fireplace we're outside and we're seeing a billowing fire um, also very similar to some regions on the moon, isn't it? Hmm. Well, here's a funny one. If Earth happens to be in the path of a coronal mass ejection, obviously the charged particles can slam into our atmosphere, disrupt satellites in orbit, and even cause them to fail, right? And bathe high-flying airplanes with radiation. They can disrupt telecommunications and navigation systems. So those spy planes, those high flyers, probably even the UFOs. Because it's funny, we say, how come, you know, we don't see UFOs so much when the sun's active? Well, that's what I asked myself many times, and I've mentioned many a times, and maybe the radiation is dangerous for the Earth human ufos secret project ufos high flyers you know they stay on the low key they come down because at eighty thousand feet when the radiation hits that plane it's dangerous so not hard to guess which um sunspot i'm going to take a guess here 
We have the uh, 2974, 2975, the big one in the center, higher up the 2976. We see plasma lifting up off the edge on the bottom left there. Yep. That's why there's another CME on its way to Earth. Here's a beautiful shot of it. Um, again, we're still on March 25th. I really think it's totally awesome to be able to see the surface like that. Because like I said, you know at one point we're going to see something incredible. So during the last CME, which by the way, guys, was in March. Then it went to the 9th or 11th of March uh, of February. The 9th of February. Always in 2022. There's several CMEs. If there's like two a month, oof. And now it's going to ramp up. At one point it'll be one a week. One every three days, maybe three a day in the near future. Look at the ring that we see around the 2975 in the center right there. That's always um, what we see so far on my end before a CME um, shoots out is you notice that plasma that's around the sunspot. A corona mass ejection CME is a significant release of plasma and accompanying a magnetic field from the sun's corona into the solar wind. What is the corona? It's the sun's atmosphere. So this, the sun's atmosphere is spitting out. There are several classes that classify the strength of these CMEs and flares. An M-class flare are is what happened, medium-sized. They're generally... Uh, causing brief radio blackouts, so we could see some of that in the coming days, and we will. It affects the Earth polar regions, right? Minor radiation storms sometimes follow an M-class solar flare, which we're expecting one. Compared to an X and M-class events, C-class flares, smaller with few noticeable consequences here on Earth, a solar eruption. Pushing asteroids around with light. That's right. Sunlight can move asteroids. Like Earth and many other objects in space, asteroids rotate. At any given moment, the sun facing side of an asteroid absorbs all the sunlight while the dark side sheds energy off as heat. When that heat escapes, it creates an infinitesimal amount of thrust, pushing the asteroid ever so slightly off its course. Ooh, ooh. Over millions of years, this force, called the Yarkovsky effect, can noticeably alter the trajectory of smaller asteroids, they say less than 25 miles or about 40 kilometers in diameter. Interesting. Similarly, sunlight can also alter the rotation rate of small asteroids, thus causing them to break apart. And that is the YORP theory. It affects asteroids in different ways, the sunlight, depending on their size, shape, and other characteristics. The hottest part of the sun is its core. When temperatures top 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, 15 million degrees Celsius, the part of the sun we call its surface, the photosphere, is a relatively cool area, 10,000 degrees 5,500 degrees Celsius. And one of the sun's biggest mysteries, the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona, gets hotter the farther it stretches out from the surface. The corona reaches up to 3.5 million degrees Fahrenheit, 2 million degrees Celsius, much, much hotter than the photosphere, the surface. Another solar flare let off a CME around February 10th, and here, look at all the flares. You can see two on the right, one on top, one on the right, bottom right, and that incredible line of flares there. Again, this was filmed on February 10th, 2022. On average, these plasma projectiles are about 1.5 billion cubic kilometers in size, which is slightly more volume than all of the water on Earth. They have an average mass nearly three times as big as the Titanic. They also race across the sun at an average speed of 56 kilometers per second. I have so many other captures that 
most people didn't even flinch when I posted it. And of course, I'm never talking about my community. If it wouldn't been for you guys and gals, I wouldn't even be here. But look now how close we can see the fires on the, on the, no, not the moon, even though there are fires on the moon, but on the sun. And in my research, I've documented now several objects, especially at the end of 2021, but that just coincides with the cycle 25. When the sun started ramping up, I started seeing a lot more asteroids, meteors, or objects around the sun. Don't forget the plasma that leaves the sun, those fireballs, right, of plasma. There's a shadow to this object in the photosphere. So think of it. Photosphere is the surface part that we call is what we see, sphere or not, flat or not, whatever you get into that. What about this dark triangle? That, you and I both know that it's going by a sun that, guess what? No sunspots. That's a good thing, you know why? Because humans can't go close to the sun when it's radiating. It's very dangerous. It'll kill them. It's even dangerous for astronauts. So you can assume that there are no secret projects probably going on around the sun or high-flying airplanes like I told you all at 80,000 some plus feet. You could be sure it would be dangerous. Um, uh, you know, the navigations, problems with um, all the gauges and everything in their um, planes, high-flying planes, aircrafts, that's for sure. So thank you so much for taking the time to take a look at the video. So you saw the footage live during the CME of the sun to give you an idea of exactly what it looked like with some basic information, things that I was interested in myself to learn about. Thanks for taking the time to listen, guys. Cause the slow's just coming soon Cause the slow's just coming soon